Ngedi Madolo is a world-class visual artist whose work has been exhibited in renowned spaces from the National Arts Festival to the Turbine Art Fair. Born in Alice in the Eastern Cape, Ngedi completed a national diploma in fine arts at Walter Sisulu University, majoring in painting. Using an art genre of collage called urban contemporary art, Ngedi's work showcases his insatiable fascination with how classism and racism interact, portraying a black experience of urban South Africa. Welcome, Ngedi Madolo. Hello, hello, hello to you and all your viewers. Could you just explain to us what urban contemporary art is and why you chose to use that specific genre um, to have your artistic expression? Urban contemporary art is art particularly very heavily influenced by the urban environment, urban settings, and just the geography of it specifically. And it is contemporary because then it is a narrative that speaks about the now, about what is happening as a young Black South African in South Africa. I grew up in rural Eastern Cape. I would rather I was born there and I moved around quite a bit. I did some of my schooling in the Eastern Cape, um, in East London, as well as Port Elizabeth. And the difference between there and where I am right now, which is Johannesburg, it's very different from home. Like it hit me so hard when I landed in Johannesburg and I saw the difference between it and home. I just realized there was so much concentration. The melting pot that is Johannesburg had so much to show me. It, 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 I grew as a person, you know, by being in this environment. I got to interact with a much wider range of people than I ordinarily would have back home. And so all these influences they just came and they were very striking and they seemed to me like something I definitely needed to to speak about, to make sure that 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 I I I, I convey. The message about it is about being an ordinary man in an extraordinary country. I use collage, I use fine art and and and, and, and the narrative behind my work to kind of show, you know, uh what what is ordinarily a person who is sidelined, what is ordinarily a person who's constantly in the background, who is always used and milked for the melanin just for 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 either political gain or or, or, or all these other malicious uh, um, intentions behind it, you know. So one of the reasons why I feel so strongly about it is that I get to put forward the story that nobody takes the time to listen to, to, to actually research and understand. Mm. And majority of the South Africans, you know, I mean, I'm talking about like almost 90% of, of, of South Africans in my story. Now let's, let's go back. Let's, let's, let's retract um, and talk about when you, you knew that you wanted to be an artist. When was that? For as long as I can remember, I've been, I've been drawing. One of my earliest memories of me drawing was my mother used to have to force me to go to church. In order to get me to sit down and pay attention in church, she would always have a pen and paper or, or a pencil and paper ready. You know, that way I will be I will be I'll be here. You know, I'll be within her sight and she can actually concentrate on her reasons for being here. This happened religiously, excuse the pun. It was a part of my life. The time I spent drawing, I became good at it, like really, really good, like obnoxiously good. It was just like that thing that made me special. It set me apart. And so by the time I got to high school and finished high school, no one in my family even gave it second thought, you know, in terms of like, like what am I going to do now that I'm done with high school? It, everybody was like, yeah, it, it, he's obviously going to go and study yeah. fine art. It's a sad thing to say, but I think without my art, I am nothing. I remember talking to you and you were like, I would rather starve than be anything else but an artist. And that's such a funny thing because, well, the starving artist narrative is an actual reality. So I do know now you have decades of experience in the field. Um, you have residencies, you've traveled, and just looking at your art pieces, you know, they range from like 40,000 to 50,000 rand. Um, but do what do you say to the starving artist narrative? 
the starving artist narrative it's not a nice thing but it's 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 quite ripe and it's there it's very real you know and the reason for it isn't isn't or rather is because of just like getting in and 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 and, and realizing that this is just something it's a personal passion you know it's it's, it's a you thing and only you can 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 push yourself forward as an artist mm. so this is now outside of like getting support and and all these things because i mean if it, even if you did have the support you would still starve emotionally because you're the one who needs to feed this 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 expression this this thing that needs to come out you know yeah so the fact that there isn't money in it in the beginning is then what causes the starving artist narrative but mm. the longer you 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 hold on to it the longer you you push it the longer you you just maintain your course and just persist the better mm. it becomes here's here's a beautiful thing about it as difficult as it is in the beginning where like i said i would literally rather starve and that wasn't because of the starving narrative or anything of that i mean this isn't something i would choose for myself i don't think i chose to be an artist this is just something that i am the further ahead you get the easier it becomes it becomes so easy that you get to a point where you can even just start gliding like you get you, you get to like an autopilot part you know so just the longer you stay the course the easier it becomes and your life becomes easier than, than 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 the average person you know you get to travel because of your work you get to make money because of something that you love and it doesn't feel like work at all in fact you it's like breathing it's like being paid to breathe being paid yeah. to smile that's to incredible be, you yeah, because you're currently in Naisna right now, so you can say that, and there's physical evidence of it does get better. Now let's let's talk about someone who's in their in the beginning stages or in their mid um, mid careers, um, finding the balance between trying to find your voice. You know, the exploratory artist versus the the artist who knows what they want to say and have a distinctive artistic style or genre. Um, what what was that process like for you, and what what insight could you share? Do everything. You have all the time in the world. Dabble in this, dabble in that. You know, you don't have to like pick something and master it right away. You've got all the time in the world. Does an artist need a distinctive trait for us to know whether okay, whatever medium they choose to express themselves, even if they are experimental, but is there something distinctive that they need to kind of bring to their work so that we know as the audience that this is this person's and this person's work. You no, know, it definitely is, but it's not how you express the idea. It's the ideas themselves, the thing that actually comes out of you. How it manifests itself is completely up to you. However materials you choose to 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 use, that's that's beside the point. It's 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 your narrative that's really more important. That's how people identify you. It's it's not how you're saying, it's actually what you're saying. So as an artist who's going around learning all these things, your message is still the same. You know, your convictions are still the same. Your 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 childhood is still the same. Your your expression is still the same, even though you might use different ways to to go about that. A lot of people come into the industry thinking that, oh, I'm just the artist. You know, my job is to create. But we have been um, kind of awakened to the fact that there is exploitation and you do kind of sort of have to have a knack for business or business acumen so what could you say to that as an artist you are by default an entrepreneur okay so especially one who expresses their own ideas so nobody is going to pay you or at least hire you to tell them your thoughts how you feel what you think and and speak your minds there's no such work of that kind so you make the work yourself one of the more important one of the most important things is is to understand value chain from the beginning of 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 the raw material all the way to the end 
product that is then sold and you make your profit from it. Now, you don't necessarily have to do all of these things yourself, but it does help to know, to understand. Terms like value chain come from understanding business, you know, and, 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 and how to run a small business. What are the things that go into, you know, because it's one thing to make a beautiful artwork and just hand it off to somebody else. And you don't even know how they go about making your work worth something in the eyes of the world, you know. All you know is, is to speak your mind. That's 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 uh, almost an irresponsible way to go about living, you know. It's this vicarious redemption that you now leave it up to so and so to 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 handle your problems. You have to get out of the romantic part of it and realize that if, especially if you want to make a living out of it, mm-hmm. you have to realize that now you need to understand how to make a living out of it, what goes into it packaging, production, uh, um, presentation, and all these things, you know, they all come together. That's actually how you, you combat exploitation, by understanding your value and how it, it, it moves forward. Investment art is something that you're very passionate about. And this is a term that I heard actually from you for the first time in my 20 plus life. So talk us through investment art, um, the the pros and cons of investment art and, and what it is in this day and age, etc. Investment art is buying art that is meant to appreciate in value over time. Now there's ways to find this sort of work. So you don't you don't just go out and buy a piece because it's beautiful and you think because you've kept it for a long time, it's supposed to mean something. Um contemporary artists ordinarily make investment art. So people who speak about the now, depending on whatever time they might have lived. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter whether it was in the 1980s or it's in it's in it's in it's in wow. 2000. But an artist who speaks it's almost like uh, a record. Basically you're buying a record of time. And this was the artist who lived there and 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 this is what they were talking about. And how relevant was their conversation? So these are some of the things that go into, into what builds value in a, in a work, as well as what has the artist done as an individual, you know? Things that they've had to do, collections that they may be a part of. So who's bought their work before? Um, how far into the secondary market are they in? How long have they been practicing for? Um, their medium. So what kind of medium they use? Uh, is it oil? Is it paint? And there's a hierarchy when it comes to the secondary market about, about medium in terms of like oil painting is usually sitting right up there and then everything else works its way from there. And so all these things, provenance is what we call history of an artwork. So as an art piece, it has history. And what this history is, who used to own this piece, where, how many times has it moved hands, and all these, we call that provenance. And these are some of the things that go into what builds value into art. So it's not just the fact that I like it, and therefore it is, you know. So there's there's there's, there's quite a bit more to it. Um, we charge for this information, obviously. So it's always best to find somebody who's in the field, you know, and 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 and. And, and and work your way through learning step by step by shadowing by 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 recording by by just being there you know attending exhibitions attending art fairs um going to artist studios is very important to especially to give you insight into where the artist is going and how to maybe like make an educated guess in terms of how far this artists will go and and the value of their work why should people especially in this time in the global economy invest in art art is considered alternative investments okay because these 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 are like things like collecting antiques and and and, and vintage cars and and 
fine art. So that's that's like alternative investment. And not everybody has access to 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 put money away that like that, you know? So it's a very nice thing to have because it it it's an emotional purchase. Art art buying art is an emotional purchase. And so to invest in something that you genuinely love as opposed to just giving your money to a bank and 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 signing contracts, you know, and you don't even know how they're building your money, or at least they explain it to you, but they don't go into exact details. And and you actually having first hand uh, 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 direct uh, uh, influence in, into where your money is going, what it is that you want it to do. But more importantly, you can actually see the change that you're making in another person's life as well. The artists in this in this in this case, you know, by building their profiles, by 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 buying directly from artists, um, and so investing in people is kind of what art investment really boils down to. You are actually investing in other human beings. You know, you can actually build relationships with these people who are in your collection. You you can. You can you can you can advocate their story, you know. You can you can actually propel their story, especially if maybe it is an artist that has since passed, you know. You mentioned something about art being uh, an emotional purchase, right? And again, it seems like I'm gonna be punishing you for I know the the, the level that you add, but it's kind of cool for you to say that, you know, because you've established yourself, um, and you know you are in the investment art scene. You've been doing this for decades, but for again someone who's moved through their careers and art is their business, it's how they make a living. How do you make art appealing? in this financial state that we're in as a country and as the world? So, I mean, they are, okay, so there's, there's, there's two ways to, to look at that. There's the cutthroat marketing aspect of it, yeah, where it's a product at the end of the day and people need to consume it somehow. And so yours is to make it as easy as humanly possible. So we'll start off with pricing in that case. Yeah. You want people to have access to your work. So your prices shouldn't from the get go just start skyrocketing. One of the things about art and its value is that from production with the artist himself, you don't start off at 40,000, 60,000, 100,000. Yeah. You gradually work your way up there. Five years ago, my works were averaging between four and seven thousand. Yeah. And because of the work that I've been putting in to to myself, to my art as a career, yeah, but I've 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 gotten through certain milestones that justify the price escalating from then to now yeah you know, it's like i said the provenance of the art works rather um speaks a great deal into how the value grows so art fairs are a great way as an artist you know like if you can if you get yourself into art fairs then you are you are you are on the stage you you are now visible. You are here. We know you as a player. And then the other point is is basically from a more personal aspect. You know the the more romantic part of being an artist. You know, is your work relatable? Do people get you? Do people understand your plight? And are you speaking of the now? Are you are you are you are you speaking to your contemporaries? Are you are you are you contributing, you know, to 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 the grand scheme of things, to your country, to your peers, to your generation, and to the world at large? So, to make your work appealing, you can't have that as your driving force. 
So the economy cannot be your driving force for producing your work. I mean, not that it cannot, because when people have various motivations for making art, yeah, but, and there's no wrong or right way to go about it. But it always it shows in the work. It shows in your own passion about your work what your drive is. Talk me through what you wish someone said to you in the beginning stages of your career. Trust the process. Trust yourself. It's very important to to not doubt yourself. Bordering on egotism, you know, like you 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 have to you have to have so much faith in yourself, you look crazy. It's very important to have ridiculous amounts of faith in yourself because then when you have so much faith in yourself, you don't question the process at any point. Even when things start spiraling down, yeah, but even when 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 things start uh, going up, you you never at any point doubt the process because I've 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 seen a few people give up because purely doubting, you know, and it's 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 something that don't even go into it if you 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 have the slightest bit of 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 doubt yeah personally mna i would i wouldn't this is a terrible thing to say but i'll say it anyway i wouldn't i wouldn't encourage a child to become a fine artist it has to happen to you it's a personal choice it should never at any point be influenced by exterior anything it has to come from you otherwise it's not going to work it's that simple. Artists should never encourage young children to become artists unless they're going to offer them the support that I was talking about, which is virtually non-existent. Yeah, you know? like you, you cannot, you cannot ask a person to put themselves out like that, to, 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 to expose themselves like that. It, it's just, it's not, it's not fair to ask that of another person so it, it has to come from you it has to be a personal decision it has to be personal conviction because that's the thing that's going to drive you through the hard time that's the thing that's going to drive your persistence and and everything else so to me personally what art is imagine imagine you have a wound you have you have a gaping wound that just refuses to heal yeah and and your job is to just tend to it because if you don't tend to it it will kill you yeah it will get infected it will it will it will rot your skin it will you know eventually poison your bloodstream and you will die but what you will find is that what is left from the process of of trying to heal is all these bloody gores and 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 and, and these things that are left behind from from trying to 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 heal and that's what fine art is that's what those art pieces that you see are it's my attempt at at, at healing and and trying to 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 find a, a a way of of coming back together of trying to find myself who am i because i'm certainly not the pain i'm certainly not the wound so everything that comes out of it. And if you don't clean it, if you don't express these ideas, if you don't get them out of your system, they will kill you. They will be the end of you. you know? And so I don't do art because I think it's fun. Yeah, you know? I get to enjoy all the, the niceties that come with it. If I don't do this thing, it's going to kill me. <laughs>